Well, once again, while we continue to be in lockdown during this uh, coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic and we're unable to join in worship in our church, uh, I'll continue to bring you this short service of morning worship here on this second Sunday of Easter and uniting together, knowing that whilst we may be isolated in our own homes, we are always together under God. I'll be working from this order of service, which many of you will have already received, and so we can follow through this together. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognise God's presence with us now. As God's people we have gathered, let us worship God now together, across the miles yet joined. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the light of Jesus, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. So may the Father forgive us by the death of his Son, and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. Reading from the book of Psalms, from Psalm 16. Preserve me, O God, for in you have I taken refuge. I have said to the Lord, You are my Lord. All my good depends on you. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble in heart. Though the idols are legion that many run after, their drink offerings of blood I will not offer, neither make mention of their names on my lips. The Lord himself is my portion and my cup. In your hands alone is my fortune. My share has fallen in a fair land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel, and in the night watches he instructs my heart. I have set the Lord always before me. He is at my right hand. I shall not fall. Wherefore, my heart is glad and my spirit rejoices. My flesh also shall rest secure. For you will not abandon my soul to death nor suffer your faithful one to see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is the fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures for evermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Peter. Chapter 1, verses 3 to 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith being more precious than gold dust, more precious though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel according to St John, chapter 20, verses 19 to the end. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening, on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. 
After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed? because you have seen me. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, today's Gospel reading from John begins with the disciples meeting behind locked doors, afraid of the authorities. The similarity with our own situation today is not lost. We are confined behind locked doors, not for fear of the authorities, but for fear of spreading this dreadful virus. However, the effect is the same. We are locked away, unable to be out in the open. But as we read in John chapter 20, verse 19, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Today's Gospel reading features one of my favourite biblical characters, Thomas. Now, I don't suppose many of you can use his name without subconsciously adding the soubriquet, Doubting. And as such, Doubting Thomas does rather seem to get a bad press, as being a bit slow to grasp whatever's going on. Earlier in the Gospel, in chapter 14, when Jesus is telling his disciples what is about to become of him, that he will be betrayed and crucified. He tells them that they know the way to where he was going. Now, you might imagine the other disciples sitting and nodding in agreement as Jesus says this. Only Thomas questions this, saying that they don't know where Jesus is going, so how can they know the way? When I was at uh, Vicar School, or Theological College to make it sound better, I would sit in class confident that I was the dimmest person there, not daring to ask a question which, as far as I was aware, everyone else in the room must know the answer. I always felt greatly relieved when someone else would ask the very question I was pondering. And this is part of the reason I'm grateful to Thomas, that he's not afraid to appear a bit slow if by doing so he gets the answers to the questions we don't like to ask. So in today's reading, for some reason not explained to us, Thomas is not present when Jesus reveals himself to the other disciples. After Thomas turns up, the other disciples tell him that Jesus, whom they'd all just seen crucified, had walked through the walls of the locked room and shown himself to them. Well, of course he was sceptical. Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails in his hand, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. Well, it does sound a bit far-fetched, doesn't it? It's worth pointing out, of course, that it wasn't Jesus that Thomas was questioning. It was the disciples. They had already seen the marks of the nails in Jesus' hands. Thomas just wanted to see what they'd seen. Well, to begin with, there's nothing to indicate that Thomas doubted the resurrection of Jesus. He simply doubted the testimony of the other disciples. Now, in this sense, he's no different from the other disciples who doubted the testimony of the women who first discovered the empty tomb. 
Luke says that when the women returned to tell the others the good news that Jesus had been raised from the dead, these words seemed to them to be nonsense, and it didn't believe them, in chapter 24. Now for me, this is the attraction of Thomas, that he represents us with our doubts, our questions, our needing to know the now, the how and the why of everything, our wanting proof. We all want to see for ourselves. We want to experience God's love at first hand, not just be told about it by others. We want to have our own encounters with the living Christ. So when Jesus appeared to Thomas and invited him to examine his hands and his side, there's no indication that Thomas did so. It was enough for him to see the risen Christ, my Lord and my God. If we call him Doubting Thomas, perhaps it's because he reflects the doubt and disbelief that we harbour deep down inside ourselves. But if he reflects our doubt, may we also reflect his faith, my Lord and my God. And as Jesus came and stood among his disciples in the upper room, may he also be with us now and say, Peace be with you. Amen. We affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Let us intercede for others in the quiet of our hearts. Lord, meet us in the silence and hear our prayer. Keep us good, Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. In this time of uncertainty and distress, sustain and support the anxious and fearful and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from the love in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you taught us to love our neighbour and to care for those in need, as if we were caring for you. In this time of anxiety, give us strength to comfort the fearful, to tend to the sick and to assure the isolated of our love and your love for your name's sake. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, be close to those who are ill, afraid or in isolation. In their loneliness be their consolation. In their anxiety be their hope. In their darkness be their light. Through him who suffered alone on the cross, but reigns with you in glory, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we entrust to your tender care those who are ill or in pain, knowing that whenever danger threatens, your everlasting arms are there to hold them safe. Comfort and heal them, and restore them to health and strength. Through Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, give skill, sympathy and resilience to all who are caring for the sick and your wisdom to those searching for a cure. Strengthen them with your spirit that through their work many will be restored to health. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for ourselves as a Christian community. We are not people of fear. We are people of courage. We are not people who protect our own safety. We are people who protect our neighbour's safety. We are not people of greed. We are people of generosity. We are your people, God. Giving and loving wherever we are. Whatever it costs. For as long as it takes, 
wherever you call us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we keep a moment of silence before the collect, the special prayer for today, the second Sunday of Easter. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness, that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth, through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray together the words of the Lord's Prayer in the traditional form. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Faithful God, may we who share in this time of worship glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, our salvation and hope, who reigns as Lord now and forever. Fill us, good Lord, with your spirit of love, and as you have fed us with your presence, so make us one in heart and mind, in Jesus Christ our Lord. For God said, I will not leave you or forsake you, so we can confidently say, The Lord is my helper, I will not fear. It is the Lord who goes before you, he will be with you, he will not leave you or forsake you. Do not be dismayed. Please God, we ask that we may meet together in church again soon. Amen. The Lord be with you. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. If you wish to join in our morning worship, please send us your email to church at hawthornvillage.net. We look forward to seeing you again next week.